got it? Yeah, I'm just looking at the meter. Bahuda Shutaya Pravanti Vayam Vyada Diridam Brigato Yasamam Yadi Chai Kanirantar Sarva Shiva Mupa Maya Matku Yupa Makadam The Shrutis declare in various ways that all this, the ether and its like, and we ourselves are like a mirage. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be the comparable and the comparison? Yes. So again, uh, the comparable and the comparison, it is like this, golden ornaments, it is like mud and mud pots, all that sort of stuff. So what he's driving at is we have these two ideas. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. This is one of Shankara's most famous statements. Brahman alone is real. Satyam. Jagat, the phenomenal world is mitya, an illusion, unreal. We get other terms like pratibimba, like the reflection in a mirror. But then we have to contrast that with the scriptural statements that always say all this is nothing but Brahman, sarvam kalvidam Brahman. How do we reconcile these two statements? And what we have to deal with is the greatest of all mysteries. How is it that consciousness, which is one without a second, kutusta, still immovable like a mountain, Near Malam without any taint. Achalam, it never moves. Near Rupaham, it has no form. Seems to fork into subject object out of itself images occur and yet it never changes its nature now is this just philosophy no we actually have a direct experience of it and again if you understand the dream state you will understand vedanta because you are the god of your dream so uh, if you dream that you come across a talking water buffalo, what did you make your talking water buffalo out of? Nothing more than the fabric of your own mind. Where did you do it? Me. What is the water buffalo? It's my own mind appearing as a talking water buffalo. Now, if you close your eyes and you visualize a water buffalo talking to you, there's a similarity and there is a difference between your imagination, your fancy, and the dream. Both are just projections of the mind. If you imagine a water buffalo, you don't change into a water buffalo. You undergo no change. Only the image changes. But in the dream state, the dream body that seems real and the dream water buffalo seems other and real. This is no different. In fact, it's all Brahman. Names and forms, 
arising. So the practice dial down our reactivity that's rooted in ignorance. I take the world as serious, I take the world as real only out of deep conviction and long habit. That's all. It's all going to work out. It's all going to be okay. It's all God. Sachidana. So the man of knowledge. He's able to just stand back and watch the play of the world pass by. Watch his own equipment, his body, mind, intellect, the upadis, dance in the world, playing its part. But he is always the untouched witness. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Vibhak avibhakti vibhakti vihina param nano karya vikarya vihina param yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam yajanam chakatham. The Supreme is without divisibility and indivisibility. The Supreme is without activity and changeability. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be worship? How can there be austerity? Yes. So again, these are not meditations for beginners or intermediates. It's all God. And it's all good. And it's all the Lord's son Kalpa in the end. There's no me as an individual doing anything. And act as you will. No rules for the man of knowledge. But if you are not rooted in this yet, and you get identified with the ego, then worship and austerities and meditation, viveka and vairagya, selfless service, can be of value. What people don't realize is these are to be practiced sequentially. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Mana evam nirantara sarva gatam kya vishala vishala vihina param. Mana evam nirantara sarva shivam mana sapi katham vacha sacha katham. The mind is verily supreme, undivided, all-pervasive, and devoid of largeness and smallness. The mind is indeed in the, the indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute. How can we do anything with the mind and speech? So, some people get stuck in what the Buddhists call mirror wiping. Oh, 
in order to be really clear about the ground of being, I got to make sure that my mind is all tuned up and really quiet all the time. That's again a value at a particular level of our practice. But that too is just an illusory mind. Truth, the mind isn't real. I invite you to take on the meditation. I cannot think a real thought. No thought is real, including this one. Quit believing your mind. And quit believing anybody else's either. And everything just passes through. There's nothing or anything to cling to or grab on to. And if you do get triggered and identify, then it clears away. Think of it like, oh, I had a dream last night. No big Mark of the man of wisdom is that he's given up struggles. Kartavya, sometimes translated as obligatory action, meaning I got to get somewhere, I got to do something, I've got to accomplish something to deal with my restlessness, my irritability, my discontent. Go with the flow. Be cool. She. Next verse. Dina Ratri Vipeda Nirakarana Mudita Anuditasya Nirakaranam Yadi Chaikani. Rantaram Sarva Shivam Ravi Chandra Masau Jwalam Ashchakatham. The self is the negation of the distinction between day and night. The self is the negation of the risen and not risen. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be the sun, the moon, and the fire? Yes. So again, these ideas of the uh, path of the smoke, the six months, the darkness, the winter solstice. Oh no, that's bad. You shouldn't die then. The path of the light, the sun, the <clears throat> towards the summer solstice. So that's cool, cool, cool. There's no distinction. It's all the same. Whereas the Hebrew psalmist says, rest in the Lord. Very patiently. Let the Lord do all the actions. Frequently, people will say, Jim, why did you do blah, 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 blah? And to be polite, I'll tell them a reason. The truth is, I have no idea. It just happened. Why did you say that?
man of wisdom has the inherent trust in the deep intuition. And again, the precondition for this is you have to attain to Yoga Rudha. You've got to give up attachment to being this way or that. Just Next verse. Gata kama vikama vibheda iti. Gata cheshtha vicheshtha vibheda iti. Yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam. Bahi rantara bhinnam. The self is that from which the distinction of the de of desire and desirelessness of action and inaction are gone. If there is only one indivisible all comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness differentiated by exterior and interior? Yeah. So again, for the man of wisdom, Desire and desirelessness mean nothing. In um, I think it's in Yoga Vasishta. There's the story about the king and the queen. And they decide to get realized. And she's a, a good yogi, so she transcends, and he gets all caught up in doing ritual. And the Sanskrit is so cool because the passive voice occurs a lot. It's kind of impolite to use the active voice, first person. So the scripture says, a desire to acquire Siddhis arose in her. You know, it doesn't say she decided to get Siddhis. It's like there's nobody there. It's just the impulse arose. So for the yogi, you learn to trust This is the development of what in the West we call the intuition. In the beginning, it may be an occasional hunch or an inspiration. But if we learn to trust it, it becomes an unerring guide in life. Sometimes does our ego get in and we make mistakes? Probably. But it's a whole different way of approaching life as opposed to from the rational mind and trying to plan things out and script conversations and things like that. It's this deeply spontaneous way to live. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Yadi sara visara vihina iti Yadi shunya vishunya vihina iti Yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam Prathamam cha katham charam Amam cha katham If the self is devoid of essence and lack of essence, if it is without void and non void, if there is only one indivisible, all comprehensible absolute. How can there be a first? How can there be a last? I suspect that's a scriptural reference and I can't bring what it might be to mind. 
uh, it says first is origination of the universe or waking state, last is resolution of the universe or deep sleep state. Okay. Makes sense. And that, in a sense, could be every experience. A new perception arises and then it dissolves, and another one arises and it dissolves. That's what consciousness does. This incredible sense of everything changing. But you change not. You are never touched by the changes in the world. Oh, Jim, the stock market's crashing. Oh, what am I going to do in the future? My retirement. Oops. You all be okay. You may not get what you want, but it can all be okay. Next verse. Yadi Veda Vipeda Nirakaranam Yadi Veda Kavedya Nirakaranam Yadi Chaika Nirantara Sarva Shivam if the self is the negation of difference and non-difference, if it is the negation of knower and knowable, if there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be the third? How can there be the fourth? So again, this is a riff on Mandukya Upanishad. There are some scholars who talk about the four quarters of OM, A, U, M, and silence, waking state, dream state, deep sleep state, and then they posit a fourth state, a super conscious state, the Turiya. That is not how our tradition parses it. The three mind states, waking, dream, and deep sleep, are, are a catch-all for any state the mind can be in. The Turiya, the fourth, is the fourth in the discussion. Chapter four. Paragraph four. Meaning it is the still awareness. In which all the those mind states and all of them by. Next one. Gadita viditam nahi satyam iti vidita viditam nahi satyam iti yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam vishayendriya buddhim nasi katham the spoken and the unspoken are not the truth. The known and the unknown are not the truth. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be objects, senses, mind, and intellect? Yes. So, is it silence? Or is it shabda, word, sound?
silence can be a marga away. But the absolute is beyond sound or silence. Next. Gaganam Pavano na hi Satyam Miti Dharano Dahano na hi Satyam Miti Yadi Chaika Nirantara Sarvam Shivam Jalatascha Katham Salilam Chakatham Ether and air are not the truth. Earth and fire are not the truth. If there is only one indivisible all comprehensive absolute how can there be cloud how can there be water so for example a bunch of us are looking through the uh yoga sutra and in the second chapter there's all this very complicated exegesis of various cosmology and how everything kind of grossifies and descends and all this kind of business Shankara gets into a bit when he talks about the Panchakaranam, the fivefold division and subsequent recombination of the Tanmatras, the subtle elements becoming the gross ones. It's so simple in the end. The objects of the dream are seen to be unreal because they're negated. Likewise, the entire phenomenal world grows and subtle is unreal, is an illusion because it is seen, because it is knowable. Everything in the world of phenomena is negatable. It passes away. Only the self is non-negatable. When you ever not you. Next one. He's taking all these various scriptural and philosophical constructs and basically says, don't worry about them. Yadi kalpita loka nirakaranam Yada kalpita deva nirakaranam Yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam Guna dosha vicharam atishva katham. If the self is the negation of imagined worlds, if it is the negation of imagined gods, if there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be discriminating consciousness of good and evil? So the human mind sees with two eyes, good and bad, right and wrong, moral and moral, vicious, virtuous, <coughs> pleasant, aversive. Those are just mind states. Those are just human opinions about things. And even in the more subtle ones, like the Advaita Vedanta is true and the dualistic truths are not true. Christianity is true, Islam is bad. 
my understanding of Judaism is right or is this wrong, all of that kind of stuff is not. This is why the Vedantin can be a home in any religious tradition. All have some truth and all, including his own. Next one. Marana Maranam he Nira Karanam Karana Karanam he Nira Karanam Yadi Chaika Nirantaram Sarvam Shivam Gamana Gamanam he Katam Vadati. The self is the negation of death and deathlessness. It is a negation of action and inaction. If there's only one indivisible, all-pervading, sorry, all-comprehensive absolute, how can one speak of coming and going? Yes. So again, going to the dream state, a question I like to ask, do you incarnate into a dream? Of course not. You don't incarnate into the body either. But it feels like this is me. You have the same experience in the dream state. It's just imagination. But you are not imaginary. What is my problem? Abhyasa, superimposition. I superimpose on something which is very real. All sorts of stupid ideas. Scripture is very clear. Why don't you quit doing that? You'll be much happier. It's all my, it's all a light show. It's all like a virtual reality when it's all bliss. Next one. Prakriti purusho na kibeda iti nani karana karya vibheda iti yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam purusha purusham cha katham badati. No such distinctions exist as prakriti and purusha. There is no difference between cause and effect. If there's only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can one speak of self and not self? Yes. So here he's riffing a bit on Sankhya philosophy, Purusha and Prakriti. In Sankhya philosophy, they posit that each one of us is an individual soul, a Purusha. And our problem is we've gotten tangled up in material world, Prakriti. We've got to undo that. Shankara say you've got to discriminate between the self and the not self. But what the Avaduta is saying is all of this isn't true. It's not real. I was watching a video earlier in the day. And what the, the guy was talking about is how we don't comprehend how 
really big spaces, the solar system and the whole universe. So when you see like a poster of the sun and Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, it's all crunched into small distances. So it'll fit on the size of a poster. But like, what really is happening, I think I understood this, if the sun were the size of a basketball, the earth would be the size of a marble a couple miles away. It's that spacious. You just don't see it. You can't comprehend how vast space is. So they give us a model that we can comprehend. Same thing with the atom. Protons and neutrons, then you see the electrons like orbiting like a like a little solar system. That's not really what it is. So the scriptures give us these tools. They're a way of thinking that gets us outside of our thinking. Shankara's great example is, okay, I have a thorn in my finger. So what do I do? I get another thorn to get that thorn out. But then drop them both. All of the philosophical constructs in the end are not real. I mean, what I like to point out, for example, in Viveka Chudamani, my favorite book, is it's completely inconsistent. There's a pedagogical journey. In the beginning, Shankar allows us to be identified with the body. Talks about the glories of the human virtue, attaining to full manhood, warrior spirit. He's talking about the body. Then he switches gears and he essentially talks about the subtle body. Qualifications of a fit student. Basically working on the mind and intellect. Then we switch again get into discrimination between the self and the not self. Very powerful. I am not the body, I'm not the prana, I'm not the feelings, I'm not the thoughts, I'm not the ego sense, I'm not even ignorance. I'm the witness of it all. Then he drops that. Self is absolute. Now you got to see the self in and through the world. We lied. There is no not self. And we have to reconcile those two understandings. The world is mithya, illusion. The world is Brahman, all God. But it may be true at the same time. And in the end, the knowledge dawns on the Shisha's mind. Where has this world gone? There's no bondage, there's no liberation, there's no scripture, there's no disciple, there's no guru. It was here a moment ago. It's gone. All right. But all of these are 
temporary tools. Don't want to get stuck on that. Now, what a good teacher needs to be able to do is discern what's the right tool for the student wherever they're at. For example, Bhagavad Gita is a great scripture for those of us who are to a large degree really large. What we want to do is give up the momoksha. At the beginning, it's not an appropriate text. Any thoughts? Next one. Tutiyam nahi dukkham samagamanam naganat tutiyasya samagamanam yadi chaika nirantara sarva shivam sthavirascha yuvacha shishuscha katham There is no coming of the third kind of misery or the second kind of misery due to the gunas. If, there's, if there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be an old man, a young man, or an infant? So all of the things that we talk about, worldly miseries, and there are several lists that the scriptures put forward, but the point is, None of it touches. Just watch this body go through its various dopes, successes and failures, joys and sorrows, honor and dishonor. You have no concern for it. It's all going to be okay. Next one. Nano ashrama varna vihina param nano karana kartri vihina param yadi jaika nirantara sarva shivam mani nashta vinashtam atishcha katham The supreme is without caste and stage of life, without cause and agent. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness of the destroyed and the undestroyed? So the implication here is even for yogis, we can get caught up in the spiritual status. I can remember when I was in India in 2015, and I went to see Swami Tejo Mayananda, and they just had um, a Gita camp. All these Swamis and Brahmacharis, and Tejo says, so you want to take sannyas, you were saying this to the Brahmacharis. He says, why would you want to do that? You know, you could kind of sense, oh, that's the next step. I have ambition in the spiritual life. Go do your duty. If it's given you to be a sannyasi, it will happen. 
nothing is a star. Or being a Brahmin, oh, I'm going to the moon cast. Or I'm not, you know, this or that, tall enough, smart enough, am I spiritual enough? All sorts of ways in which ego can grab onto the star. Sure. How many more in this chapter? Is it a short one or a long one? Uh, why don't we end early and we can pick up and finish this chapter um, in the new year. We have plenty of time left. Are there any questions that you might have? Is it still just Mark online? Susa Lee is also here. Susie, I, I like your haircut. You look very handsome. Oh, what happened? It was all in <laughs> Anybody have thoughts or questions before we end? This will be our last class for the year. Happy holidays, everyone. Does a student know when they're ready for the Amaruta or does the teacher know? If you need the teacher to tell you something, you're an idiot. One of the marks of really rooted knowledge is it needs no external verification. Krishna himself could come along and say, you're not ready, you're not ready. You say why? No. Or Lord Shiva could come, I, I have an enlightenment certificate for you. Now, listen carefully. The sada, the seeker, is seen to be doing spiritual practices so that she may purify her mind and realize the self. Very good. But the woman of wisdom may also be seen to be doing spiritual practices. Why? It's the highest form of worldly pleasure. It's fun. But it does not increase their knowledge of the self. Whatever quiescence the mind may achieve in that period, it will change. And isn't that your experience? You go off and do a Vipassana retreat, you may get very, very quiet. But it's not the same when you've got a whole lot of stuff to do at work, and you've got things to fix in the house, and you've got relatives coming, and it, it, it's different, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. But does your self change? Does it? No, it doesn't. No. And then you may spend time teaching in another Vedanta class. Do you enjoy it? Does it keep you reveling in the self? Yeah, I mean, it ends. Did that make sense? But it sounds like, you know, you were saying that Avaduta Gita is still recommended for a student of Gita. Avaduta Gita serves a purpose. It's 
purpose is to remove the meditator. Its purpose is to remove the mumukshu, which is for many of us the last place where we're hanging on, where we have an identification. We have what I would call false humility. I just decided to do with these practices. Now, I'm not saying I'm an enlightened soul. No, be Brahman. Be Brahman. It's the only thing you'll ever know for sure. Uh, what about this world? <laughs> Try not to be a dick. That goes a long way. Someone once told me that one of the last teachings of the Buddha was good manners are far superior to enlightenment. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, I think it's very funny. <laughs> and I totally get it. I don't know if that's useful. Mm -hmm. Do I know, don't I know? Is this it or is there more? Am I enlightened or is there something I'm missing? Am I fooling myself? Those don't sound familiar? Yes, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. Rather than trying to resolve those doubts, drop the mind. It's ego's subtle attempts to own the falseness. Yeah, but yeah, but this is nothing. <laughs> That's right. Now, quit being concerned about your own stupid experience and try to be useful. Pass this on to someone else. And if you had a student who came to you and said, well, I'm doing a practice and I think I'm progressing spiritually because I, I've begun to see the blue pearl. Am I getting close? Because I'm seeing the blue pearl. What would you say? Who sees the blue pearl? Huh? Who sees the blue pearl? How do you know to say that? Did you read it someplace? Doesn't it come from your own direct experience? I'm an alien. I read a book that human beings have two heads and four arms. Is that true? Is it because you studied anatomy? No. My Kundalini is going up and down and up and down and up and down. Is that it? I have raised my kundalini. What would you say to that if you had a student who had that particular doubt? Hmm? Is that actually a question? Yeah. But you're going to get them. Yeah. The same thing, right? Says in Kutopanishad, meditate on the self as a flame the size of your thumb and the heart. That's what scripture says.
you can't be a, 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 a guru. You, you, you own a motorcycle. What happened to the one similar to it? They're not going to tell you. So the woman of wisdom, the man of wisdom has become a living Upanishad. All they need to do is look to their own direct experience. A woman of wisdom can unfold any scripture. Now, that doesn't mean you understand all the, the mystic symbolism. You know, nine gates and 11 bodies and stuff like that. There are traditional things like that. But the basic essence of the scriptures, it's your own direct experience. And all I can say is, if I were to ask you, do you know what your essential nature is? Either see it or you know. This been useful. Yeah. All right. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namudachate. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yonamaha Hari Om